Hello, Internet. Now, I received some requests from you uh, concerning when I use the Databricks system about the Databricks file system or Databricks FS. Now, what you have to know is it is a distributed file system mounted into a Databricks workspace. So now we have here, for example, if you have a look at the cluster, we have a simple cluster here up and running. We have runtime 10.4. Uh, it is just a normal data science cluster, so no ML cluster. But what I want to show you is if you have your cluster, you notice that I sometimes use a local file system. So let me clarify what it is, how you can use it, and how you store your files on a Databricks file system. Now, in general, a Databricks file system is a beautiful system, but it's a distributed system. So think about an abstraction on top of a scalable object storage. So this tells you, okay, this is really for uh, high volume data science. In general, you have two options, and I switch between those depending on the size of the files and the importance. You can work with files on the Databricks file system or with files on your local driver node of your Spark cluster. So what I do is sometimes I switch over to the local driver node on my Spark cluster. In general, you can access the files through Databricks file system utility. This is the Databricks utility and then FS for file system. Or you know that there are some magic commands here in our Jupyter Notebox, access the files using some magic commands. And we have here FS for the file system was show. So let's start, let's dive right into it. And yeah, before I start with the code, let me show you that here we have a beautiful uh, data. And if you go here, we have the database tables and the data bricks file system. So if we switch over to the file system, you see here uh, you have the delta, you have a file store, this will become important, and then we have a temporary directory which I will use for demonstration purposes today. And if you decide, hey, I want to upload something. Now, no problem at all how you upload a file to a Databricks file system, you have the target directory and you have by default your file store and then you say optional, I don't know what you want, test for. I suppose we should have this and then you click to browse and you have a Titanic test and you open, you see the file is uploaded to file store test for Titanic test .csv file, done. So to upload your files, it is very easy. There are a lot of options how you can upload but just for demonstration purpose, this is a really simple way to upload your file. Now, if you now are looking for a specific file, you go to the file store and you have test four, and then you have here your Titanic test CSV file set. So upload file DBS, simple. Now let's use the Databricks file system utility the for the file system and have a look at the content. So what you get in return is that you have here a path. This is a Databricks file system path, file store. Then you have Databricks data sets, the results. You have some delta. This is one of my things. Then to test seven, a TMP, your user. So you have a lot of, of directories if you want. And then you just dive in. And you can see here in my temporary, I have here something called ML flow. And info TMP, my new file. So if you want to verify this, very easy with the user interface, the make file system TMP here. So you see, you have me and my ML flow directory and I file my new file. So identical here, my new file and my ML flow directory. Beautiful. So use the Databricks utility file system. Now to simply put a file there, and we have just a very easy file. This is a file in the cloud storage, blah, blah, blah. You notice you are familiar with this just to show you already exists. Yeah, of course I've run this before. And then you say, okay, 
you can put it as either you say you put it just it has to have an absolute path this is so important so either you say file store and let's do my new files three no 23 and this is the oops yes i don't care so true we have file store temporary my new files let's have a look at this file store TMP, my new file two and my new file two paragraph. Beautiful. So it works fine. This is the way you can store your files. Of course, you can also use, now this is a third option. Sometimes you see that I operate with um, OS. This is a single node file system if you want. So you can say, okay, import OS and then say simple OS list jir. And you can have a look at the directory structure. So, and as you can see here, come on. Uh, Databricks file system, workplace, mountains, mounts, whatever you have. So, and if you want to deep dive into something, you are familiar with um, import OS. Now, one important fact I would like you to remember is uh, FS and database utility FS read are by default from the root. And the root is, of course, database file system. So default FS and Databricks utility root. Now, if you want to read, and this is what I have done in my demonstration, uh, uh, Jupyter Notebooks, is to read from a local file system. And now remember, no? this is the second option. Now we have files on the local driver node of our Spark cluster. So it's not a distributed file system now we're operating. For simplicity reasons, for demonstration purposes, you must use the extension file. Now, let's have a look at this. You have an ls file, temporary. Show me. So you see now, temporary, you know, yes, 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 whatever it is. This is the content of your directory. So if you say, okay, make a directory attempt my local dear test 40, come on, 44. Let's execute this. And you run this again. So we're looking for my local dear test 44, MMM, my local dear test. Oops. my local dear test 44 here we are so as you can see easy you can do the same of course with the databricks utility you say okay just show me the content of my temporary and then you have all the different co content or you say okay my new file i then use 377 and this is the driver net 377 whatever and you have a look at it and you see my new file 377 here oops here is it so we just created this file now of course you can mount it if you work with s3 or aws or whatever or azure or whatever you have uh, you can have mounting object storage to the databricks file system allows you to access those objects in object storage as if they were in your local file system so easy you have your mounting point you say spark read and then you specify the path so next point very easy very simple but let's go through this because i received some questions about this write files to and read files from the root the databricks file system root uh, again databricks utility fs provides files files system like commands to access the file in the dbfs so let's say let's make a directory test 777 and in this directory yes we put test file 9 say hello world and then we say okay show me the head of this text file and we have here the result hello world beautiful then of course we say thank you we do not need this anymore let's remove it done 
And then if you want to display, yeah, display test 77. Let's verify this with a display command. It's an empty data set. So what do we have to do? Just fill in again. Oops, not found, not found. Where is it? Ah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, wrong command. And now if I go here and say, show me. Spark job, my goodness. Uh, now we have here the display and we have here our directory test 777. And in this directory, we have a test file, test file 9 point, uh, text file, the size, the modification time and whatever. So very easily done. But of course, this is write files to and read files from the root. But of course, what you will have is you will have a Spark API. You will um, work with uh, Spark data frames, panda data frames or whatsoever. So let's say you have uploaded a file. Let's do this whole system again for dem demonstration purposes. I did not say switch here somewhere. We go to a file store. In, come on. And in our file store, you see I have some tables. Yes. And in the tables, I have some CSV files. And I need these CSV files for some TensorFlow calculations. So what I do, I right click on this file and say copy path. And now you see, select a path to copy. Oh yeah, you can either access files in Databricks FS using either Spark API or the local file API. Now we are using here the Spark API format. So what I say, just copy. Say thanks. So let's go here and let's have a look what we copied. And as you can see, this is the, the absolute path. So data break file system, the file store, and we have the directory tables, and then I have my, ah, it's a, it's a, a text file. So what you say then, and this, as you can see here, this here is exactly what I put here as the absolute path, Spark read CSV, show me the file, show me the data frame, and here we are. So it's a data frame, just one column with a lot of sentences. File store, t yeah, if, you, here I choose always to have the absolute path. You can kind of shorten it if you say, okay, my data break file system is clear and you start with slash file store and then the, the almost absolute path. You can do this also. Yes, have a look at this. It works also beautifully, but do not forget this has to be an absolute path because if you do this, you get an error, path must be absolute. So always remember, it's a small slash, but it means the world to us. Here we go. Yeah, the type is of course a PySpark, a SQL data frame. And yeah, you can write, of course, the data frame, write CSV with an absolute path. You write to a CSV file in your uh, Spark API to the Databricks file system. So no problem at all. If you want to have the file API, yes, of course, you can say Databricks utility, the file system, the head of, again, an absolute path, don't forget. And this will be the header of my text file. And you see, have oh, one sake. So let's have a look here. First sentence is January plans two, and second uh, sentence is COVID punched and whatever. So here we go. January plan sortful roadmaps guide organization and all lips month follow. Okay, this is sentence one. And then we have sentence two, COVID punch and tired. Yep. And the third sentence is seemingly overnight, strange historic event erupted. Then seemingly overnight, beautiful. So you can use Spark API, you can use the file API, whatever you like. This is how I use it. Uh, this is what you will see in my demonstration files. I do switch from the local file system to the Databricks file system, depending on the resources, of course. But I think most important is um, operational Spark APIs. And Spark APIs I showed you, you just upload your data. You go into Databricks file system and here you have whatever you like. You check the path, you have the park. If you use uh, PySpark, the Spark API, so just say copy, this is it. And then you have your absolute path, so you can reference it.
This is it. Very simple, very easy, but careful. You have to use absolute paths, and these are the methods I use normally in a regular system. So two options, work with files on the Databricks file system and distributed file system mounted into a Databricks workspace and available on Databricks cluster, or you can work with smaller files on the local driver node of your Spark cluster. I say thank you. I hope you enjoyed it a little bit. Things become a little bit clearer to you. Like, subscribe, whatever you enjoy, and I see you in the next video.